City of Stevens Point Board of Park Commissioners Meeting, recorded January 3, 2024. It's 6.30, good, after, good evening to everybody. I want to call the January 3rd uh, Board of Parks Commissioner meeting to order. Uh, Director Kramer, would you mind calling the roll, please? Broderick? Here. Freckman? Here. Disher? Here. Gladuski? Here. Keemer? Here. McDonald? Here. O'Connick? Here. Shabilsky? Here. Shore? Here. Sorensen? Here. And Wynn? Here. We have a quorum. Excellent. We'll move down to agenda item number two and the approval of the November 1, 2023 meeting minutes. If you have a chance to look at it, otherwise we'll give you a second. And if there are no changes, I'll entertain a motion to accept as presented. So moved by O'Connick. Is there a second? Second. Second by Wynn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. <laughs> Yeah, That's we'll, we'll put him yeah. on the first one. He's yeah. on the first one. We forget we have the delay tonight. Right. So we'll have to wait till you say something, Mr. Disher. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving down to agenda item number three, approval and awarding of the timber sale contract for Yoga Park and West River Park area to Weekly Timber and Pulp. Director. Yeah, so as you recall, we talked about doing the timber sale about, I think it was almost a year ago when we first said that our forester, Todd Ernster, had noticed that we had some dieback in the uh, red pine stand that we had, and we said ultimately we were looking to do some preemptive uh, removals and, and do a timber sale for some revenue. So at that time, you authorized us to go proceed and to bring in a timber sale specialist. Where we're at in the process now is we have marked the timber and the location. So to re remind everybody, it's Yulga Park out by the Whitetail subdivision, which is in the packet you can kind of see it uh, they had a, a rendering of it and then West River Park just next to West River Drive and Double H there's a small area on the north side as well as on the south side on some parkland that we had bought years ago. So we ended up getting two proposals for this. One was Weekly Timber and Pulp Company, which is who's the recommendation for award is tonight, which is estimated based on the quantities and things that have been marked to be a value of about $11,800 to the city. The other quote that we received was from Javoric Logging Incorporated for $5,375. We have had the contract reviewed by the city attorney. Todd worked with that on uh, handling that. So the contract is is good to sign if, if approval is received. It is a little lower than we first forecast based on both the numbers we're seeing in the timber sales industry as well as the quantity that we actually observed after marking it. However, our plan is to use this money in a reserve fund for forestry operations and potentially some small improvements for the disc golf course there too. So um, we're recommending approval tonight to move forward. I will mention if this is approved tonight, we will notify the public. So when we painted, there were some questions, but we have not sent out letters or done social media posts to say, hey, we are doing a sale. Additionally, we need to coordinate the access. So we'll be letting the neighborhood know that we plan to use Torren Road to Whitetail. And we're working with the Public Works Department to make sure we have a heavy enough frost that we don't do damage to the road. So that's our plan for getting access as well. So uh, if you have anything that I missed, feel free to add it. But our recommendation would be to award this uh, to the weekly timber and pulp company. We anticipate the revenue to be around 11,800. And we hope to do this, you know, late winter, early midwinter when it actually sets in here uh, in 2024. Okay. And They have a they have until March of 2025 to do it up to that. So it would be during it would only be done during the winter during the closed season, and then the green circle runs through there. Also, we would have notification <coughs> for that too. Those are the two things I was going to add. Okay. So any questions, Mike? One question: How many how many trees does this include then? What's in the packet? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, how, how many yeah. do you get? Uh, like it, it says, 305 cords of red red uh, pine pulp and bolts. So how many trees is that? There's a lot of red sprayed out there. Um, I, I don't know the number. Yeah, like I said, uh, I don't want to guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's a lot. And we've we contacted the disc golf group because they're very active. They put a lot of their own time and money into it. So we, we walk the site with both loggers with that group so there's no miscommunication with them. But um, um, the, the logger came uh, was also recommended by a county forester that I know, and um, Steve Gress, who did the first logging 20 years ago, um, you know, thought it should be done, you know, a number of years before we have, and it's been on my plate. And since Director Kramer came here, he kind of gave me a little push. <laughs> Liz, go ahead. 
Um, how does the amount that we're going to be receiving compare to other timber sales that we've had in the, in the past? And then I'm just wondering if you can comment on, it's really a huge discrepancy between the two estimates. Well, that's why we got a second one, because uh, um, uh, we anticipated more, but the, the, the market's way down from what I understand. That's not my expertise, yeah. but so we wanted to get at least one more and then a, a forester that I know that's for the county that I graduated with him, so I called him and bounced an idea and he said, well, you might want to try this, you should check this out. And uh, th this company was doing some logging out at the Dewey Rifle Range, he was familiar with them, so that's where we went. And then the only other time we have did a logging was out in that same subdivision, and that, like I said, that's just before the Whitetail subdivision was uh, built. So I, that's, I don't know how, that's a long time ago, so I, I can't remember how that was. Okay. Thank you. The only other thing I can add is this is a little unique too in the fact that they're working around a disc golf course in a highly public area. Yeah. So we did receive feedback even from the, the, the two bids that we got to is they were getting their kind of mind wrapped around the impact and how much they have to work with the trail and users. So yeah. not quite as easy as you know when they go into just a standard wood lot to where nobody's around. So yeah. we think that might have also eliminated a few bidders that might have said we just don't want to mess with being yeah. in a highly residential area. Too. And I think that affected the price because it's going to take longer to do that, <coughs> to do that in a, in a proper manner. Other questions? Okay. I guess, Todd, talk a little bit about the penalties. So if, the, if they're not done by, con, by contract in 2025, is a contract null? They owe us additional funds on top of that if they don't complete it? What is in the back there? There is something yeah, for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Page eight. If they did some damage and stuff, um, that's, that's worked into there. The primary goal is not for the, for the, for the cash flow, it's more for the health of the, sure. the mm -hmm. stand. Um, I'm just going off what the both forester, you know, traditional foresters told me, so I don't anticipate this that being a problem. But I don't know if it's in there. I don't know if I'm supposed to say go ahead or you are. No. Okay. I know we have a couple clauses. Number one, we have a um, and it, we have it bit built in that there's a mediator step, and if we can't get it solved with a mediator, we can go into the, to local circuit court if okay. we have that option to resolve a discrepancy. And then we have a, um, I just have to dig for it. There's a clause written here regarding the And that's one of the too. clauses um, um, Logan had, our attorney said that we should because we have a, a little bit. There's a performance bond in the amount of the $1,770 in cash. So there's a bond involved too um, for performance. So there's that remedy. Right. Um, and then we have, I can get you the exact language, but both of them are covered with okay, the performance good. bond and the clause. So. Is there any weather contingencies in that, I would assume? Or? Well, it's a pretty wide window. So essentially, like, once they're actually logging, if it gets soft, there will be some rutting and things, right? Like, that's some stuff we'll have to work through. That's just the nature of it. But again, we won't let them on the roads or anything until it's frozen so that we don't have any issue with the roadway. Okay. So, great. So, Bob, you had a question? Yeah, I was wondering, was there any really significant public reaction? Um, I would think if there would have been, no, not that we've received so far. I mean, okay. it's been marked with the red paint. I mean, it's pretty obvious what's going to yeah. go on for quite a while. I think maybe I received two phone calls. It just, it was more into, in regards to, you know, when, when is this going to happen or what's going on? It was nothing. Mm -hmm. Actually, the couple residents, one of the, there's only a couple property owners there. We walked the property with one of them because it the, the goes right around them and we didn't mark certain trees that we probably would normally would have and then the other property owner actually asked if we could take down a couple more trees by his property just because they were <laughs> leaning towards it so it was just the opposite of what I was expecting. Is there a significant amount of oak wilt? It looked like there was... There, there's some in the disc golf area okay. <clears throat> in, in that area proper um, and we've uh, we did a lot of trenching in there this this fall with uh, some of our equipment with our staff, um, where we worked with the disc golf people. We trenched that to try to cut the root grass between the diseased trees and the healthy trees. And then the disc golf people, um, one of them works for a tree company also, and uh, he, with their own funds, they uh, they're injecting some of the oak trees that they're trying to save too. That neighborhood, though, has been experiencing, and I don't think we've been marking yeah. more trees. I actually live in that neighborhood, too, and, you know, have had feedback from neighbors, so it is <laughs> it is probably our primary area that we're experiencing some of the oak wilt in the city. Thank you. Um, so based on the maps, it looks like it 
Or it seems like it primarily affects the disc golf course and the periphery of the neighborhood. How will it impact or will it impact the Green Circle Trail at all? Or? Yep, that's right. It, it, they'll, uh, there's language in the contract. Uh, we'll, they'll have signage blocking it off during that time. We'll put some social media posts that okay. that's going on. And if anything's um, damaged within you know, unnecessarily, they'll, they have to fix it. That's all in them. I mean, there, there will be some tracks there, but there'll be signage on the path and social media. It, one other benefit we do have is Yulga Park, the neighborhood park, is on Partridge Way, and there's actually a, a, a gravel trail that connects back into the Green Circle. So we'll work with the Green Circle board once this is approved about a detour if we need it. Mm -hmm. So if they're working right adjacent to trail, we actually could, in theory, bring them into the White Hill, White Hill subdivision. There's a corner, I'll call it a cow path trail, right on the corner of Chickadee, and Chickadee is right up next to where the Green Circle jumps mm -hmm. Torin. So in theory, we actually could put a sign there that says detour. They could bring down to Chickadee and Black Bear Trail to Partridge, Partridge straight out, and you would bypass what is referred to as White Hill Park, which runs along Wojcik. Or what, I'm going to say this wrong. Wojcik, is that right? Wojcik. Wojcik. Is it Wojcik? Okay. I, I could be saying it wrong. I say it wrong every time. So Wojcik, the northern road, the Town Hall Road, yeah. and then you could actually come in on Partridge Way and cross over and then head south, and you'd be on the project limits, essentially. So we think between the detour that's how we can work that out. And the Green Circle, we work with them closely. I'm a member of their board, so we'll, we'll post all that within our publications when they get started. Great. And then if it's approved, we'll, uh, I'll get a hold of the contractor, we'll get all the contracts, and then he can hopefully give me a timetable as to when they're gonna do that. So I guess I have one last question, Dan. I, will this actually help potential enhancements in the diff, disc golf course down the road? It, it can. So I will tell you that the Disc Golf Association has been for years talking about a restroom and, and also an expansion to the parking lot. One of the big conflicts out there is when they have their leagues, their numbers have grown so much that the town of Hall has a meeting. They actually have some conflict. And they, luckily, the Disc Golf Group works well with them, but they have to remind the Disc Golf Association all the time, Keep please have your participants park on the road so that the meeting uh, folks can actually park at Village Hall. So their desire long term is to see a larger lot as well as try to fundraise someday for a bathroom. These are not things that have come here yet because they've not gotten quite as organized. I will tell you that that lot is not built to code either. When we looked at it, the regulations on parking lots have changed in the city quite a bit. Setbacks from the road, some medians, uh, plantings, things of that nature. So it's not quite as simple as just when the trees are gone, expanding it with gravel, which I think the association would have liked to have done. So we do work hand in hand with the permitting department. We've talked to them. What will end up happening here is when it is open up, we'll kind of know more open space. The town of Hall has been uh, a supporter saying, hey, we'd love to see you make that lot bigger. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be a longer discussion where this could help okay. with a lot expansion. And then eventually we're going to be discussing at some point, I think, if they have the funds, do we want a bathroom there or not? Okay. We do put a porta potty there 12 months of the year right now. So. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll make a motion. So a motion to accept that as proposed. Is there a second? Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, we'll it. go with Elder King. <laughs> <laughs> You're already on record. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept it as accept this bid as proposed. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, he waved his hand. All those opposed? All right, motion passes. Thank you, everybody. All right, moving on to agenda item number four. Staying with the theme. Uh, Approval of uh, awarding the 2024 tree care operations quote for the Stevens Point Forestry Department at Tree Fella Company. So I won't steal um, Superintendent Ernster's thunder all the way because he's here, but I, I will sell it. If you recall, every year we put out our tree care operations, so anything from stump grinding uh, to large removals, small removals, pruning. There's a number of things we do from a contracted basis, and we, we basically put the bid out, and the reason that the amount is not listed in the agenda is because we budget for it, but it's based on actual usage. So it doesn't mean that we necessarily use the whole contract. You know, if we have a big storm event, for example, we use more. If we have a year where we don't have big storms and stuff and our crew does more things, we might use a little less. What you will see in the in the packet is that we received two proposals this year, and we are recommending award to a new vendor for 2024, but someone we have worked with in the past. Uh, the Tree Fella Company came in as the low bid this year based on, the, on their unit costs, uh, and actually we, we included a history, which we'll continue to include for you as you look forward, showing the 2024 bid number in comparison to 2023, and in a rare instance, you can actually see it came down, uh, which is great for us. It's good to see a competitive market. Um, 
we certainly have been super satisfied with the Sobluski brothers have been doing for us too, but I, naturally being a public entity, we put these things out for competitive quotes and bids and that's what we resulted in. So um, Superintendent Ernster did go through this, he's reviewed it. Uh, we com we're confident and comfortable with Tree Fella Company. They understand all of the requirements. So we are recommending award to them for this year. Again, these funds are budgeted, so we use them out of the, the forestry budget account, but this sets the dollar amounts based on size. So when we do call them, we're not guessing what it costs. Uh, Todd's able to measure it and we know right up front that okay, it's this certain size tree, so this is what it's gonna be to grind the stump, cut the tree down, things of that nature. So uh, we do recommend awarding this to the Tree Fella Company. And again, for future reference, we'll continue to build the spreadsheet out so you get to see what 23 is, 24 is, 25 is, 26, etc. We've not created this for the history, but we now have this template and we'll continue to do this for every year so you can kind of see how that goes up and down throughout the years. Again, Todd, if you have anything to add, feel free to. Any questions? Todd or Director Kramer? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the, this uh, bid as proposed. So moved. And second. All right. <coughs> We've got a motion and a second uh, to accept the bid from Tree Fella Company. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Moving on to agenda item number four, approval of design for Saramore Park Restroom Shelter. Okay, so again, because of our online system, I wasn't able to put the photo rendering <coughs> in the packet, but I did email them along. So I'm just gonna put them up on the screen here again to mm -hmm. recap the discussion from last month. But again, the, the, the footprint was in the packet uh, showing the approximately 1,600 square foot shelter. This shelter design has been discussed and reviewed with some of the staff about historic preservation review. It's essentially a CMB <coughs> block building with columns that then would be wrapped in the stone. The renderings you're seeing here as a reminder, the stone variation of the color as well some of the size will change a little bit. That's not a perfect system. You know, what they show you here, it's not mined and chipped out and milled exactly the same way, so you're gonna have a little bit different size, but this is a real close approximation to it. Uh, the way the design is set up is it's shown to be, um, to have basically drinking fountains on the back with a single flush toilet restroom in one of the doorways, the other doorway to be a storage area that'll house some of the things like solar panel um, inverters and things for the solar panels that'll be on the roof. You will notice the solar panels are not placed here right now. It's already been approved, but there is a solar panel system that'll go on here. Based on last month's feedback, I, I did not receive anything additional for modifications. In the packet, you did see the, the site plan that Plan Commission and Park Commission approved a few years ago. This is consistent the way it lays out, so we're looking for approval, and uh, where we're at in the process is if the Park Commission approves of this design as it's set up, the Friends of Emerson have already contracted with Ellis. All of that is finalized. This would go for bidding you know, over the late winter into spring and should be constructed, and we hope to be ready to unveil September 1st. Yes. That's right. Yeah, September 1st. Um, so with that, staff would recommend approval uh, as drawn and currently designed. All right, are there any questions? I move we approve this. Motion to approve, is there a second? I'll second it. Liz? All right, we have a motion to accept it to, to approve the design as presented for Saramore Park. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed? Right, motion carries, thank you everybody. Agenda item number six, revision of Parks Recreation, Forestry Department Recreation Refund Policy. Okay, so as you recall, we kind of created a new format a few years ago of just kind of drafting off assigning a number to these policies so we can keep a binder on it. So in 2020, we adopted the Recreation Refund Policy. We're actually really not asking for any changes to this policy, aside from our Learn to Skate program is really bursting at the seams. Ann and Greg and, and Ron have done a great job, uh, and Katie of, of re-envisioning re that. If you remember, they won an award of the program this year. So what does happen though is to be sanctioned by the Learn to Skate USA, there's a fee that goes with it, so a portion of the, of the fee they pay us, we pay to them, and that gives them the certificate showing the completion. So we're looking to rewrite this, this clause to say, when we do a refund that's within that first four class period, we aren't losing money by having to pay that fee, that they still cover that. The rest of the policy is written as is, it's worked really well for us. Um, it was redlined, so essentially we're looking to cross out some text that talks about before the third meeting and just say up to three class periods. If, you, if it's within those first three, we would do the refund prorated for how many days are left of the class, and we also would cover that uh, Learn to Skate membership. So other than that, it would stay as written. Questions about the changes? So 
the end, in essence, just becomes a zero impact to the department then with these changes? Correct. It would be just how we're operating now, but if should, once in a while we have people question, as of late, basically saying, like, well, why are we, you know, and we haven't been able to say, well, this is why. This is able for us to be able to say, okay, if we're taking that $10 or if it's prorated, it's policy. Very rare it comes up. Usually it's... We have one or two a year where somebody might question, like, why can't I just get 100% of the feedback? And that's when we end up dusting the policy off and saying this is what it is. So we also have some language on our permits when they register that references this policy number. Okay. Other questions? If there are no other questions, I'll uh, entertain a motion to accept the revisions as presented. I'll make a motion. Alder Keemer. Bob, second. <clears throat> all right, all those in favor of accepting the revisions to this policy as presented, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. Agenda item number seven, director's report. Okay, so I, I wanted to give some updates on some pretty key elements. The first one is the Groholsky Park design. So I, I don't have this in the packet. Uh, if anyone would like, if you don't remember, actually I think the Metro Wire just ran a story on this too. But we had a kind of a multi-phased approach to that park. Mm -hmm. So what we agreed to when we took the land on Double H is that we would do phase one, which was the opening up of a, about a two acre green space. There's a walking trail, gravel trail that goes around it parking access off of double H because right now there's no actual access to the park uh, about 10 stalls and then we had a small shelter is how it was labeled where we're at is that we have I've been working with the Colliard Foundation to install a completely solar roofed shelter if you've been out at MREA they have one theirs is much larger but our structure is uh, about 25 feet by 13 or 16 feet wide so before we were looking at a 16 by 16 square polygon metal structure we've after seeing the shelter out at the MREA we were able to identify a 30 percent tax eligible refund with the federal stimulus uh, package related to solar so this will be a slightly bigger but still a small single bay four-legged solar structure in addition, it'll generate enough solar energy to power a car charging station at the site too. And the way it, it sets up with the 30% refund and the numbers with the consultant we've been working with with Rettler, we believe we'll be able to install all that for a little bit less than what it would cost to just to install the, the metal structure. So it's still consistent with everything that you've already approved from a design standpoint, other than the fact we're going to have a solar element of it too. So where we're at in the process is we hope to be out for bid in January. I hope to bring back bid recommendation to you in February at the latest if we don't make that deadline because of the posting it'll be in March but that is set to be constructed then this year hoping to be able to unveil that park as well in the fall some uh, sometime right now it's a 10 stall parking lot that's asphalt with the char car charging station on the far side of it we're just going through final reviews with the utilities department about some of the stormwater and the retention pond as well as the permitting department to make sure it meets all the building code requirements one other small modification is we had a horseshoe driveway shown that's not permittable on the county highway, essentially. They told us it only could be one access point. So now it's just the one driveway in and the same lot. So again, I'll bring you more rendering. You'll get to see it all as we get closer. Um, but another pretty unique thing, we're going from no solar in the park system to two sites that'll have it here, hopefully by the end of the year, which is, which is really great to see. Uh, the next thing I wanted to mention was about the forestry PD garage. So, if you all rem remember the capital budget, there was $37,000 put in to look at basically developing 20% design, 30% design, you can call it, with some cost estimates to build the PD garage that's shared with the forestry department because of, uh, number one, they're both housed here, but number two, the forestry garage, if you've ever been in it, if you haven't, I'd love to walk you in it. It's a single point of entry and we stack all the vehicles and it's severely outdated and it's going to be due for a number of upgrades in the future. There's also been a number of things talked about of would we ever consolidate the city campus into one location. If, if you remember, there was a discussion when the Boys and Girls Club took over the, the building here just a little bit past us, what the long-term future of that was. What I wanted to tell everybody tonight is that we have made progress of laying out a footprint of a facility that would work for both departments that would be right where a lot of the PD vehicles are currently parked out behind the building and at finance on Monday we're going to be asking for authorization to apply for a grant uh, we found a it's called a brick grant through FEMA that the building could be potentially designed as a storm shelter and a garage so basically the the school the hospital the university the residents in this neighborhood uh, over about 2150 people 
could come to that garage during tornado events or severe weather, and it would be a storm shelter, which locks, unlocks about 75% funding, and it can double as a garage for our equipment too. So that's the path we're headed down. Um, the good news about it is if the council would approve, yes, go ahead and apply for it, we'll do it. We don't have to do it. If we get awarded the money, the council will still get to decide. Certainly this board will get to decide. But it's still in line with what we were envisioning, and we're just laying out an alternative to hopefully unlock some funding. It's not a cheap facility. As you can imagine, these things get in the millions of dollars. So uh, I think that the full numbers will come out Monday. But we believe to build it to the FEMA standards, it would be about a $9 million package. Um, but over six of it would be eligible for the grant versus if you take out the FEMA component, it would bring it down a million and a half, but then you're around $7 million completely out of pocket. Again, these are big decisions for council ultimately and the finance committee. This board will certainly play a role, but because of the grant right now, it, it goes directly to finance because of the PD and multi-department collaboration. So again, I will be in front of this board as we move further. I can certainly email a rendering out once we've got it. You'll see it come out in the packet on finance if you look at it. But where we're at today is just trying to identify funding mechanisms. If we get the funding mechanism, there'll be a lot of discussions about, okay, are we moving forward? There's multi-years it can be built. We have about a three-year window after the fact. I'll also mention if that goes forward, there will be a bigger discussion for this board about what happens with the space we would be vacating. So there's a multi-layered approach here, uh, and it all centers around some planning that we'll have to do about Gerke Park as a whole and some of our partners and you know things within the park. So um, there's a lot to that. After this meeting this week, if you want to know even more specifics, feel free to give me a call. I can jump on a call with you or show you some more items. Um, th there's a lot of moving pieces, but the short version is Monday, the first one will be related to the garage. And if the garage gets built, the next domino would be to move office over here too for the park rec and forestry. So, um, and again, there's impact to the Boys and Girls Club so we're having conversations with them um, and meetings to make sure that nobody's surprised with what we're trying to do. The next thing I wanted to mention is, as you've seen, the winter has been incredibly warm. So we do not have any operations other than the KB Willet Open this time of the year, which is it's the first time in my five years that we've had that happen. Uh, we do have things like polkas on ice scheduled downtown. So if we get cold weather, which we should, we will still try to put the rinks in. The first rink, if we don't get snow that would go, would be the downtown one because it's a, essentially a giant bathtub. We put down a liner and fill it up with water. So even with no snow, we can do that one. So based on what the forecast is looking like, potentially in 10 days or so we might be able to start considering that one but we need to get some more consistent frozen temps once we get snow we'll start doing some of the things outside um, it's going to be an incredibly short season no matter how it goes because february usually the sun the sun's rays are too uh, they're just too warm and it starts to melt the rinks on us so you know we could you, you hate to say it out loud but we could use snow and cold uh, soon <laughs> if we're going to get any sort of, of winter sports in so um, i will tell you the crews are working on a lot of other other projects right now we've had a lot of overlap and cross work with in the KB Willet because it's a lot busier with the construction project and all the contractor work that we have over there. So we've actually been having quite a bit of crew help over there. So kudos to our whole team. A lot of overlap, even though it might not be just park related, right? It's been a lot of departmental collaboration for a lot of uh, a lot of different things that we're doing. There's also been a lot of tree work happening in the city, as you can imagine, um, both with the streets department and our park and forestry crew. We actually have our crew members cutting down the trees at Groholsky Park, making way so we don't have to pay a contractor to do that with the grading work that's coming up. So if you do drive by that road, you're going to see that that space is starting to open quite a bit. Are you, are you utilizing the part-time people for the, you hired for Iverson, and, or are they just nothing? We've been able to use one for rentals on the weekend but they're kind of they're basically waiting we haven't had any hours for them right now that is the biggest bummer about that position is you hire them unknown so we you know a lot of them will not be available here pretty soon too so sure. that's a whole nother layer and what is the worst part is if we don't open for appropriate season recruiting them back next year is really hard because mm -hmm. they go find another job so that, that will be another long lingering issue about not being open um, the last thing I wanted to mention was the, I got two things, I'm sorry, the KB Willick and Gerke Park project update. The team room itself is scheduled to be done around the 16th of January, so we're really close. They're actually drywalling and painting inside. What will be remaining is the exterior grading work, some of the, the uh, irrigation and things that are around the building. And then there was a facade, a new metal facade going on the east side and the south side that the existing walls structurally and the way the metal is on the building won't support. So we're looking at some reinforcements on the wall that we have to fix. Basically, we have to have, in a, in a house lingo, a better 
um, stud behind the wall, right? We don't have studs every 16 inches on center for them to drill into. The metal wrapping on the inside of the building is spread out by a number of feet, and when you put panels on, the wind load would be drawing off that metal, and it could basically pull the existing metal off. That's the most simplified, ver simplified version I can give you. So what they're looking at doing is adding some strapping behind it, which would work as a stud every so many inches on it, that they can drill into with what they call a hatch handle, which is it, it's a fancy word for a, a plate that they can put multiple screws through get into the weeds but lots of different things on the wall there's probably going to be a cost to that so we're waiting on trying to figure out what that cost impact is but we're finishing our project the actual build out uh, and rolling that right along and we'll have some time to sort out the rest so um, that'll be something we're working through as the last component of the project I hope to walk everybody through that as soon as we're done. I think everybody, most everybody was in it when we were kind of just getting started. So uh, we hope, to, you know, whether we'll have a meeting there, we'll just have everybody come over and take a peek at it. The other thing I wanted to mention is a reminder, next week on Wednesday, we do have the downtown target area master plan and the shop goal kind of redevelopment meeting. So some of the documentation was not available to be made available tonight here for this meeting. Um, I'm told it's gonna be in the packet for next month. So a couple of you have reached out to me and we've gone through some things. I just wanna to offer to you again, the downtown tar target area master plan was available. It's still the same it was before. Um, things like Crosby Avenue were impacted, the parking lot and the Riverfront Arts Center. I was able to give some more feedback on it it. That was the first thing I got to do when I got here in 2019, and I didn't know much about it. I know much more now. So I was able to walk through it with the consultant, but next week, certainly those of you that have been involved with the downtown plan uh, <coughs> about house acquisition and West Avenue getting extended, but some of you that are newer to the board might not know any of those things, I'm happy to show it to you. Otherwise, next week, we'll certainly be walking through it in some capacity at the meeting. And then the shop code development, depending upon what rendering goes in, again, I can talk to you about uh, my perspective of what I've seen so far, if you'd like to, before Wednesday, but it wasn't necessarily available for this evening so um, but that will be next week I think there's three body uh, boards getting together the council I think it's the Planning Commission and the Park Commission so I'm not sure how the staff's gonna lead that exactly but I'll try to help give my feedback to this group as much as I can of what that's I know. in the mid-state right? exactly. yeah, mid right. community yep. room right yep. okay yep and uh, there'll be a you'll get an agenda just like you do for this meeting uh, with time and location and date so uh, but yeah certainly if there's any questions on it give me a call or um, I can show you some things or if somebody's got some questions after this meeting it's at 6 p.m. Yeah. Yes, I believe it's at 6 p.m. I will get an email to everybody, though. It's been two or three weeks since I looked at what we did for invites. Okay. So. And that, I think, is what I have. There is a lot administratively going on for projects. Um, we've been a little slow with the winter sports stuff, but otherwise, again, lots happening, and there's a lot that's going to unfold this year in terms of development for the park spaces. So it should, should be a fun year. All right, any questions for Director Kramer about his report? If not, I'll I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. John? Motion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we will accept you as a second, though, if you're all right with that. All right, we got a motion to second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you. Hope, we hope to see you all next week. A video of this meeting is available for viewing on the city's website, stevenspoint.com slash videos.